Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we've got two quarterbacks who hope they have an opportunity to shine on defense. It's Jalen Ramsey's Jaguars going up against Davis's Colts. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we welcome you to Lucas Oil Stadium, which opened back in 2008 here in the Circle City of Indianapolis, Indiana. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And we are underway from Indianapolis. Fielded about a yard deep. Uses the spin. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Indianapolis coming off the overtime win against San Francisco, led onto the field by Jacoby Brissett. But in that win over San Francisco, really a lot of the focus on former quarterback Peyton Manning being inducted into the ring of honor. And Charles, they retired his number 18. And he adopted that number in the NFL because that was the number his father wore as a quarterback in Mississippi. But you mentioned Jacoby Brissett tried to emulate Peyton Manning a little bit with the win late in the ball game, saved the day for his team. And he's trying to play the best he can because Andrew Luck is starting to warm up now. They're expecting a week seven return for Mr. Luck. Let's go. One, nine, one, one, one. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Let's go! They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. On offense here for Indianapolis, let's focus on the running backs. You were in London a few weeks ago. They say changing of the guard over there. Well, the Colts, they might have a change of the guard going on in the backfield. Frank Gore's still running strong, but don't overlook Marlon Mack. Did Frank Gore just hear you say that? Maybe. But does he know about the changing of the Look, guard? I, I like Frank Gore, but he's getting a little older. Did you just say that, too? <laughs> I like you, Frank, I promise. Yeah, but you're right, though. Marlon Mack, nine <laughs> carries, go. 91 yards. There's always a transition in the NFL. We could be seeing that occurring in Indianapolis. You got me nervous. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. We always look for breakout seasons, and Jack Doyle had one in 2016. 59 catches. What? He didn't have that in the previous three seasons. No, previous three, 35 combined. But he was stuck behind Kobe Fleener for a while. He went to New Orleans, really opened things up, didn't it? Yeah, and Dwayne Allen's been shipped off to New England, so Jack Doyle, truly tight end one. down it's gore and he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41 three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down charles we have off discussed this jacksonville defense and what they've been able to build through the draft best in the league coming into the game last week against pittsburgh allowing less than 150 yards per game and they didn't disappoint against the steelers did they no way you can disappoint when you pick off ben roethlisberger five times five, yeah. have two pick sixes in there how about Barry Church picking that one off, bringing it back, and then diving into the end zone? That dive he did into the end zone was like something you see on the Madden game, isn't yeah, it? That was a little madness. Very much so. <laughs> Barry Church with a little homage. Here we go. 
Now on second down, this is Gore. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. The Colts send out their punter. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Jacksonville Jaguars coming off a win against Pittsburgh in week five. Blake Bortles bring the offense out of the field. Bortles really didn't do much in the game. He only threw 14 passes, 85 yards, but maybe he found the recipe for success. Turn around, hand it to Leonard Fournette. Yeah, when you only and he only had the one interception, mm -hmm. and that's big for him. Keep the turnovers down. But when you hand it to Leonard Fournette and he runs for 181 yards, yeah, that is the formula for <laughs> success, isn't it? it no is. doubt about it. Play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective they go play action here on first down over the middle complete. That's Cole. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Brandon, I think we can see early on they're making a concerted effort to get him the football. So to me, that means they like the matchup that they have. They feel like he's better than the guys that are covering him. Two plays, two passes. We'll see if they go back to that well. Fresh set of downs here. First rounder from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Now the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it but they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. Green, 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 green. <laughs> They'll run it again with Fournette. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. 
And now a we'll look at the defense for the Colts. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, when you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. From the gun, it's Bortles. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 25. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. down to the 43. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position. The guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Come on, let's go! One, Another carry now for Gore. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here we go! On third down, Brissett. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check-down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Henry Anderson in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. On 
second down. Here's Fournette. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Charles, for Fournette, you mentioned the 181 yards he had last week. Moved into second place in the NFL behind fellow rookie Kareem Hunt. And this is what they expected when they drafted him, number four overall. They wanted a guy who could eat carries, eat up yardage, control a ball game. And that's exactly what he did against Pittsburgh. Handed to the big fella, let him have an effect on the defense. But what really got to me was watching that big 90-yard run he had late in the ball game. I mean... Is that not what the Jacksonville Jaguar fans have been waiting for, to see that? And how about his stamina at the end of a long day to still have that in him to break off that run? And that 90-yard run, longest in franchise history. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. And they just did not get the snap away in time. Still first down. The penalty on first down backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. But well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. This one all the way down inside the 15. And that one results in 35 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. And now a first down following that long game. Into the red zone. It's Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Al Woods never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Play. 
Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. Stiff armed him. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allow the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Try and start the drive here with Gore. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second and nine to start things out. to his tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Here we go. Brissett. And he's got Moncrief. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one. Here I go! One, nine, 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So five yards remain now, still first down. the penalty it's gore and he'll lose yardage here back at the 47 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down partner you mind if i take off this headset and put on a coaching headset you want to get this running game going i want to get this running game going i'm going down there and saying gentlemen we have got to run the football we've got to get it going right now yeah to this point in the second quarter it has been a struggle Again, they run again. It's Gore. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it third down and ten. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Let's go. One, nine. One, nine. From the gun, here's Brissett. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And Daniels has it over the middle. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. The Colts send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. This one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22.
The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. to throw. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was, because that's all defenses talk about. Getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. on the run and that cuts us down to a third and about five. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken a thousand yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Now Bortles going for the deep ball. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to put it away. Back deep for the Colts is Quan Bray. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll start on the ground with Gore. <laughs> and he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. So much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense have felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Gore again here on first down. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Brian, 
And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Encroachment defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game. And they reacted poorly on that one. Three yards to go here on second down. Here's Brissett. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. This is Marlon Mack. And he's brought down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. They're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Keep it on the ground, Mack again. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Second down. Going deep for Moncrief. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Dante Moncrief, 41 yards. And the Colts are in for six. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guys covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catching them. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee and they'll take over at the 25. And here is Blake Bortles as we focus in on him for our player spotlight. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. 
he's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, you had the punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. the 30 to the 32. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. To throw, it's Bortles. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. So here we go, first and ten now. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So the offense has it first and 10. Blue 45. Blue 45. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Bortles to throw on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Bortles looking to throw on third and two. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Here's Brad Nordman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. But look at Dante Moncrief. He and the offense getting ready to go again here. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. 
keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate him. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Let's go. First down, Brissett. To the right side to Aiken. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Had a game with Baltimore a couple of seasons ago, and Kamar Aiken caught my eye in that one. Turned out he nearly had 1,000 yards that season, but last year a little bit of a slump. Really down, 29 catches, just over 300 yards, only one touchdown, so they're hoping to boost his production here in Indianapolis. He can be a strong physical inside type of a pass catcher if they can get him going. A second down throw for Brissett. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Come on, let's go! What? Ah! To throw, Brissett. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here we go! Red 38! Brissett again. Drops it underneath to Gore. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it second and short. Frank Gore, the ageless one, over 1,000 yards last year. He's the first running back age 33 or older to top 1,000 since John Riggins way back in 83. So what he's done is he's made the case for running backs who are approaching 30 that there is life on the other <laughs> side of that number because many think once you hit 30, go. you're going to decline. They'll throw again. Brissett over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Set to throw on first. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Doyle. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout, and now we're set to get going. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 34. And Vinatieri's 
kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. To return it is Corey Grant. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Three, three, 90. A final shot before half for Bortles. His throw incomplete. So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports halftime report. The Colts are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Jaguars just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Coles by himself here, and he ends up with their own 41-yard line before he stopped on the play. Jaguars line up at the 13. Woods is going to take down the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Now to late in the first half. Here the catch is made way downfield, and this great play will go for six. The Colts go up by four. Thank you, LR. Appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Play fake here on first down. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. That's the rookie from Ohio State, Malik Hooker, with the INT. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door 
and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Kamar Aiken, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Now a handoff for Gore. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Colts on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. Let's go! One, nine. Out of the gun, Brissett. And he's got Moncrief. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. First and goal, goal. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Another try on second down for Gore. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. This will be caught just inside the 10. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here comes Blake Bortles now to lead his offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, partner, one story that certainly caught NFL attention from this last week. Peyton Manning having the statue unveiled in Indianapolis for the years he spent there from 98 to 2011. How about those years? When you talk about glory years, they, that's exactly what they were in Indianapolis with Peyton Manning as their starting quarterback. A couple of Super Bowl appearances, one victory. But so many records, so many MVPs, so many great memories there. It's right that they retired his jersey and commemorated him with a statue. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Now we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Brad Nordman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. This is taken at the 23. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. A look at Dante Moncrief. He and the offense getting ready to go again here. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards. But, hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes... That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looking really, really sharp. Here we go. Brand 38. Brand 38. Off the play fake. Here's Brissad. And he finds a man on the crossing round. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. I feel for some of these guys nowadays because it is so tough to be able to run with these tight ends. Their speed, their elusiveness, especially when they run across the field. Because you're not just running with him, you're trying to run through some traffic as well. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. set now he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete so second and ten here From the gun, here's Brissett. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down.
The Colts on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. Again, it's percent. It's complete. It's Gore. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. You know, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. A fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So second and medium, second and five now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Portals now on the option left side. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. He lost a big chunk, six yards there, and it leads to fourth down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Here's Brad Nordman now, standing just outside his own goal line. as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Time to establish the run game. It's Gore. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. We're set on first down. And this 
this one is incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's second down. Charles, looking back to last week, the injury bug really bit some teams. Heck, Houston's defense lost J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless about 10 minutes apart. Has not been a good last two weeks in terms of injuries to key players in the NFL. Dalvin Cook, the rookie runner in Minnesota, who was playing so well, he got hurt the previous week. And as you noted, this week for Houston, Merciless goes down, torn pack, he's out for the season. J.J. Watt fracturing his leg gone for the season. And how about in New York? Odell Beckham Jr. fractured ankle. Going to get a second opinion. Likely gone for the season. A really good pickup of 28 yards. set of downs here. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. I'm still an old school football guy, and anytime you see a big time running play, that fires me up. And if I'm on offense right now, in the position they're in now, inside the 10 yard line, I think after the way they've run it, they've set themselves up for a good play action pass opportunity right here. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Brissett, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time, a lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails, not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Benatari now to tack on the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Five plays there on that drive. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out come the Jags. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Now 
Now Bortles throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time it's third and three. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And that is incomplete. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Here we go! Right on oh, the handoff, it's Gore. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. We're set now on second down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there of 20 yards. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. A first down throw for Brissett. Complete to Hilton. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Led the NFL with 1,448 yards in 2016. The first Colt to do so since Reggie Wayne in 2007. How about this guy? He's been something. Yeah, four straight years now, over 1,000, and three straight Pro Bowls for T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, what I love about him, inside, outside, he can work it all. Second down, Brissett. Caught left side by Hilton. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Into right, right. the air once more. It's Brissett toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Gore. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. 
They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. The Colts on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and eight. Here we go! From the shotgun, it's Bissett. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. The Colts send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. the handoff now Bortles over the middle the connection to Hearns and he'll get to the 29 yard line brought down there give him nine there on the first down completion decent start to the drive but let's face it they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores yeah they're gonna run their two minute offense here in this game but this is for future games can they get better and be ready for the next time hopefully with a chance to win Second down, here's Bortles. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So here we go, first and ten now. Shotgun now for Bortles. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Lee. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and ten, here's Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. John Simon from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Three, three, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. On third and long, it's Bortles. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Here we go now. Blue 45. Blue now Bortles got to have this one. Airing it out for Hearns. And this is going to be incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And this defense is going to get the football back near midfield, right at the 48. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in the game. Three, yeah, about the four in the four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up. Get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. Reset to throw on first. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Now Gore. And he's brought down. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. And they're not going to get this one off in time. It'll be a delay. Still first down. So now first and 15. And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. Not much there, maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, 
That looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two, now third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Colts on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and 14. Come on, let's go! Hey, 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 hey. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down, and they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down, but guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down, really put them behind the eight ball. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good-sized lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him, but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Bortles now on first down. Going up top. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Hey, hey, hey. Now a play fake, Bortles. Over the middle complete, that's Cole. And he's brought down. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Bortles now on first down. Wide open.
open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A good pick up there, a 22. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front yeah, buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's a give to Fournette. This carry, despite the extra effort, will be stopped short of the 10. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second down following the run. Set up the screen to Fournette. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars make some inroads here on that deficit. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up. It's good. That'll make the score line 20 to 10. A drive that time of six plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Here's Myers now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. First down, it's score. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. 
Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football. And that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. On first down, Bortles. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cole. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Throwing on first down is Bortles. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there of 20 yards. To throw is Bortles. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. And a line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Three, three, 90, three, 90. Back to throw, Bortles. And incomplete here on third down. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Portals in the offense remains put on the field. They're going to go for it on fourth. Here we go now. 
Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he's going to be taken down here. Back across midfield, three yards away from midfield at the 47. John Simon coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Now it's Gore. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Here we go! Flex round! Flex round! They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. the defense they got a little bit of a breather now they're back and set as we resume play They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Hey, come on, let's go. Come on. They run. It's Gore. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. The Colts send out their punter as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And some space here. Got some room at the 30. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. And the spike comes with just 12 seconds left to go. Off 
offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Bortles. Throw left side complete. That's Cole. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. And, Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get home after a win like that. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.